Hello, my name is Keshwani. That's K E S H W A N I, Keshwani. I have been solving math problems for GMAT out of this book here, the GMAT Review, the official guide. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You should be able to find it at mba.com. The problem that I'm about to solve is the one that you will find on page number 186, problem solving number 247. The exact same problem also appears in the newer edition, the 12th edition in this book. In this book you will find the same problem on page number 185, problem solving number 228. Exact same problem. Let's take a look at it. It's important that you have the book in front of you, for in front of you and that uh, you read the problem you read the problem with me. It says, an arithmetic sequence is a sequence in which each term after the first term equals to the sum of the preceding term, equals to the sum of the preceding term, and a constant. Well, what does it mean? You see, for example, I'm just going to make up an arithmetic series here. For example, 4, 7, 10, 13, 16, and so forth. It's an arithmetic series. This is this series is called an arithmetic series because uh, let me read the sentence again. An arithmetic series, an arithmetic sequence is a sequence in which each term after the first term, each term after the first term is equal to the sum of the preceding term, sum of the preceding term and a constant. The constant here is 3 in this, in this series my constant is 3. So this term equals 4 plus 3, this term equals preceding term 7 plus 3, this term equals preceding term 10 plus 3 and so on and so forth. The question simply is, if the list of this number shown above is an arithmetic sequence, which of the following must also be an arithmetic sequence? And then they give you three answer choices. So let's look at the series that they give you. Well, I'm going to put it right on top of it here. P, Q, R, S, T, and U. P, Q, R, S, T, and U. I'm just plugging in numbers here, that's all. Just, just, just plug in numbers and we'll see what we'll see what works. So the very first uh, answer choice uh, is this. The very first one is 2p, 2q, 2r, 2s, 2t, and 2u. Is that an arithmetic series? Well, let's find out. 2p is going to be 8, this is going to be 14, this is going to be 20, 26, 32, and 38. The question is, is this an arithmetic series? Well, let's find out. Let's find out. Of course it's an arithmetic series because if the original series was an arithmetic series with the, dif with the difference of 3, if you take everything and multiply it by 2, now you can have a difference of 6. That's all it is. Of course it's an arithmetic series. You see, you take the first series, you add a constant of 6, you get 14. This is 14 plus. So here your k is 6. Of course it's an arithmetic series. It is an arithmetic series. That tells me that the correct answer, whatever it is, has to have Roman numeral 1 in it. Let's look at the answer choices. In every single problem in the exam, the, the problem is of course on the screen, but on the scratch paper that they give you, in every single problem, I write down A, B, C, D, E. The very first time, the, as soon as the problem appears, I put down A, B, C, D, E. I take my page and I put it into four parts, so each page has four problems that I can do on it. They give you, they give you ten, about 10 pages. That's enough. You, you only need 37 questions. That's, that's enough for 40, that's enough for 40, 40 problems. Oh, and again, if you need more, they'll give you more. Just ask for it. What I'm trying to tell you is that, especially in a problem like this, this is what I call a 1, 2, 3 problem. Most people have a tendency of analyzing all three of these statements together, one by one, and then finding out the right combination and then looking for the answer with the dead combinations. Don't do it that way. Do one, do one statement at a time. Start with the easiest statement and work, work your way up. In this case, of course, I start with statement one because it's the easiest one. So, statement one works. This is an arithmetic series. 
That means anything that does not have 1 in it, I'm going to cross out. That rules out B. That says 2 only. It rules out C. This says 3 only. D says 1 and 2, and E says 2 and 3. That rules out E. Do you see? Right away, we have raised your R to 50 50. Let's look at second statement. The second statement says P minus 3, R minus 3, S minus 3, and so on and so forth. So basically, I'm going to take the original series and subtract 3 from everything. So it becomes 1, the 4 becomes 1, 7 becomes 4, 7, 10, 13, and so forth. Is this an arithmetic series? Of course it is. Of course it is because we're not doing anything. We're taking the original series, we're taking the original series and basically lifting it up and shifting it 3 units to the left. That's all. Every, every number that was there pre previously now is 3 less than that. But the difference between the two adjoining numbers does not change. It's still going to be 6. That's all. Or rather 3. We had this difference of 3 here. I'm confused about this one. This was twice here. Here we had a difference of 3, 4 and 7. That difference is still going to be 3. This difference of 3, difference of 3. This is an arithmetic series. Which means the correct answer, whatever it is, must also have Roman numeral 2 in it. Let's see what can we cross out now. A says 1 only, that's gone. Well, there you go, answer is D. That's the only one that is left. The only, only man standing in the ring is D. That's your answer. As far as the exam is concerned, we're done. The answer is D. But just for the learning purposes, if you're curious, I'm going to show you why 3 does not work. But let me look at the camera first in a second. I'm seven minutes into it. So let me look at the let me let me quickly explain to you why statement number three is not an arithmetic series. Statement three says p squared r squared p q squared. Oh, they don't have a Q in the problem. I inserted Q for no good reason, but that's okay. That's not. That's not. That's nothing. Nothing earth shattering. Just this Q does not appear in the thing. They just want to be cute. That's all. One would expect P Q R S T. You know, P Q R S T U. They left out Q. Why? As I told you before, because they like to be the pain in the derriere. That's all. Just, just don't worry about it. I, I inserted Q in there. It doesn't change anything. So, P squared, R squared, so on and so forth. So here is my Q squared, R squared, S squared, T squared, U squared, and so forth. So this 4 becomes 16, this 7 becomes 49, this 10 becomes 100, 13 becomes 169, 16 is going to become 256, but as you can clearly see that the difference between the two between the two uh, adjoining terms is no longer constant. This difference is not the same difference as this difference. The difference here is 51. Clearly the difference here is not 51. The difference from here to here is 51. The difference from here to here is 69. This is not an arithmetic series. The answer is D. That's all. Of course, if you have an arithmetic series and you take each of the terms and square them, it's no longer arithmetic series. That's all. I hope you found it helpful. If you wish to hire me for hire my service for personal private tutoring, or if you wish to purchase the solution manuals to all the problems in this in this book, along with the data sufficiency problems. In either case, if you wish to get hold of me, go to my website at www.prep p r e p prep for4gmat.com and send me an email. I'm located in Connecticut, as I've said before. Uh, it doesn't matter where you are, wherever you are, I'll come and help you as long as uh, as long as we can come to an agreement. Uh, I mostly do my tutoring uh, in Connecticut and um, and mostly in New York City in Man Manhattan area. But wherever you are, just send me an email, and if it's feasible, uh, we'll work something out. All right. Thank you.